ladies and gentlemen, I'm befuddled. I am bamboozled. I am heartbroken. I am a lot of emotions right now. But before we get into everything baseball that is causing said emotions, trying desperately to remove your feelings from this evening's game, how are you two doing? Pain, Ron. Pain, Nick. It's just, I. It's been a busy day for me. Uh, was hoping to watch a nice Cubs W. I thought that's what I was getting. It was a great offensive performance and. The bottom just fucking fell out. Just fell out. It, it's heartbreaking when your team is in control for more or less eight innings mm-hmm. of six to one, even six to three ball, and you lose. And you know what? Juice said it on this show yesterday. And I'll 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 be brutally honest. I didn't entirely believe him. When he, when he said, he said, this ball club is the 78-win club that I thought it was. I didn't necessarily react. But in my head, I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if we've seen what this Cubs team truly is yet. And I'm not saying it's there yet, because I think it's still early in the season. We have a lot of good to talk about still, right? Say a Suzuki, hotter than shit. Don't let say I get hot, right? Mm. Ah, let's go. Christopher Morel is hitting like every fifth pitch that he sees out of the fucking bar out of the ballpark but holy hell if blowing a five run lead does not grind your gears i don't know what will i don't give a fuck the fact that it's mid-may a five run lead you had the lead drew smiley pitched a fucking gem and this bullpen who still doesn't have a closer, who I said it the other night that this team could benefit from having a guy that is definitively the ninth inning guy, blows a fucking game. And I don't care who it's against. Tyler, you said it on on our, you know, just a little while ago. I don't care who the hell it's against. That was a five-run lead that they pissed away in this one. And it's a shame because Smiley was good. You got uber power out of Seiya Suzuki. You got power out of Christopher Morel. You got timely hitting from some really key guys tonight in a lot of facets, but they left too many guys on and the bullpen pissed it away. And it is absolutely infuriating to watch that happen. I hate this. I, I hate to, it's not early. Like it's not anymore. Like I know I get it. It's, it's just May, but like, Damn, man, like it sucks because all off season long, like you said last night, we get our it, it, we get our hopes up. We look at all this, you know, all these acquisitions we've got and you know, April. April, it's it's like what the hell happened? April was great. And now like Jesus Christ, man, like is is this is this like that team that we're talking about? Is this is this them? Is this it? Is this our identity? We've been talking, you know, for the past few weeks about trying, like, you know, what what how does how does ownership view this team? What are we doing this year? And it's slowly, it's like it's slowly they're slowly making that answer easy for them. And it, it's slowly just like it's just painfully just game after game just like. It's like I don't I don't give a shit that it's the Astros. I don't. Like, what was? I, I know we'll get into it, but it's what was Keegan doing in that spot? You know what was Adbert doing? Like Adbert pitched one inning and, and got himself in a jam. It could have worked worked his way out of it. Why not throw him in the eighth inning? Throw Mark Leiter as the closer, but like. Jesus Christ, like, I'm saying like a lot, but Mm -hmm. it's like I told Joey. It's like I tweeted at Joey during the game. It's like I won $1,000, Ron, Nick, on a scratch-off at the gas station down the street. And walking back to my car, I got jumped, mugged, and my daughter's knocked up. And here's the thing. I don't even have a daughter. So like, 
Jesus Christ. It's just, I've got the, right now, right now, at this very moment, I've just got this attitude of, here we go again. Yep. Here we go again. Because, because the scary thing is, I said it a few weeks ago. Yeah, it was nice seeing St. Louis lose all these games. It was nice seeing them at the bottom of the barrel. But if you look at the standings right now, somebody's getting a little closer. And us is falling a little bit farther. Mm-hmm. And it sucks. It sucks because you had the Nationals. You had the Marlins. Should have been easy. We, we should have won those. We should have won those series. We should have won those series. Uh, you guys talked about it yesterday. This weekend, you win that first one. Hell, it don't even feel like we won a game in that series because the Twins turned around and kicked our asses twice. And it was just like, good God. I'm like, what just happened? And now this, now this, and it's just like, here we go again. I listened to the last night's episode as well, and it was depressing because Juice kind of struck a chord with me, and Tyler kind of repeated it there. Here we go again. And it's not early. It's not early. You'll never forget game 163s, things like that. Every game matters. Every series matters. Every moment matters. Um, and for these little screw ups, they're starting to accumulate and they're really starting to accumulate and it's starting to be really damaging. And these are the type of blows, like these kinds of losses that kill momentum, just kill it. And you needed to at least salvage one tonight just to pick up the momentum again. But now you're, you're talking about someone that's knocked out basically and not getting back up. I mean, you could turn it around, you have an off day, there's a positive, but it's not It's not good, not good at all. And here we go again, is that going in my head as well? I'll, I'll tell you what, though, I'm almost happy they have an off day tomorrow. And it's not even from like a resting standpoint. It's It gives you 24 hours to have to sit through this shit. Because there is nothing, as a former athlete myself, all of us played athletics at some level, right? As a former athlete, there's nothing worse than having to dwell on a loss longer than you should. And in this case, that's exactly what's about to fucking happen. They're getting on the plane right now to go to Philadelphia. They're going to take the, I don't know, probably two and a half hour flight, give or take, to Philly. Get in in the wee hours of the fucking morning. Check into probably some dog shit ass hotel. Because let's be honest, no hotels are that great. I, I've i stayed in the hotel that they claim that the Detroit Tigers stay in for spring training. And if that's where they stay, no wonder they're a poverty-ass franchise. There's no such thing as a great hotel on the road. They're going to have to sit there then tomorrow. And that cheesesteak that they eat, whatever it is that they fucking do on their off day, they're going to have to think about this loss. And that sucks. Because this is one you should have had, truthfully. You had it. You had it through what? Seven innings? More or less eight. Fuck, you had a three-run lead going into the ninth. You got to put that shit away. And you know what makes it even more disheartening? Is some of your best pitchers got rocked tonight out of the bullpen. It's not even like you threw out Merriweather or fucking Fulmer or any of those guys. Yeah, none of those guys came out. It was Keegan and it was Hughes and it was fucking lighter that got lit up. Alzale right now is your best relief pitcher, truthfully, out of the bullpen. Playing bar none, he's the only guy that hasn't gotten truly rocked all season. And I'll tell you what, it, it, it solidifies what Juice and I talked about a little bit on last night's show, is that Cody Hoyer is going to be the closer of this ball club when he comes up and is healthy. Hey, he's a le- he, at the very least, he's going to get the opportunity. Hell yeah. It's his, if, if, it's his if he wants to take it and go with it. He did it at the end of 2021 when he came up and, and was traded for after the, you know, Kerry Kimbrough deal. He looked really good in the role, and he's shit-pumping 99 right now with the fastball. That alone gives if i'm david ross hell yeah i'm giving the ball to cody hoyer in the ninth inning you need that ninth inning guy it really does i am a true believer you know analytics can tell you whatever the fuck they want to tell you but in the game of baseball and really in any sport you need certain types of players in certain types of situations that's just the way it works 
And in the case of baseball, having a bona fide, definitive ninth inning guy makes a difference. It really does. Because, yes, you can absolutely have guys that can get the job done in the ninth. And that's fine. That's great. But when you're at home and that that music plays and that dude comes out of the bullpen, there's a whole different swagger with your ball club, right? Think about it. Think about it in, in, in our pasts as collective baseball fans here. Trevor Hoffman, when he came out of the bullpen in San Diego, you knew. As soon as the song hit, two beats, you knew who was coming out. You knew what was about to happen. Same thing with Mariano Rivera in New York. Same thing goes now, current day, right? We saw it with Edwin Diaz, right? With Timmy Trumpets. AJ Puck with the Marlins at home. I went and watched that live. That entrance was freaking, like, I knew the second he came in the game, it was just like, which, by the way, if you're listening, if you have not seen AJ Puck's entrance, go watch it. It is freaking, it's it's electric. And I knew the yeah. second he came in that game at my at my at Miami, yeah. it's over. Yeah. Yeah. JP Romano for Toronto, same way. Liam Hendricks, when he's healthy, he's about to be back soon with the White Sox, same way. Having that ninth inning guy in baseball is a real fucking thing. It really is. Having that dude with that ninth inning swagger to close games really happens. It really works. We saw it with the Cubs. Look at Craig in 2021, how fucking good he was with the Cubs. As soon as he came out of the bullpen, you knew the game was over. It was done. He was going to pitch, you know, probably K2, get a weak-ass grounder over to second base on the other guy and end the game. And that's how it was. This Cubs team is absolutely missing that right now. And I think, if nothing else, from a confidence standpoint for your defensive players, for your manager, for everybody that's sitting on the bench, that goes through your mind. And I think tonight was a perfect example of that. Keegan's been great. He's had a really good season overall. He's been struggling lately, but... In general, he's he's done some good things, right? Do you, do you want his last seven game stats? No, I don't, because I know what they are. They <laughs> Brandon Hughes, same thing. Overall, not atrocious. Lately, not great. Lighter tonight was lighter's really like first blip on the radar, truthfully. But when your top relievers get knocked around like this. It just feels like a big metaphorical kick in the dick. And it's not fun. It's really, really not fun. 